Han. The yen tumbled to a 24-year low against the dollar this week. 130 by year end. Experts are warning of a potential foreign exchange market crisis. Beijing's number two economy is having a horrible year. A level not seen since 1998. Currency market has been a focus of attention this year, especially in Japan. Could the MOF step in and intervene on the currency to stem the yen's decline? So much worry about Japan's currency that the government intervened. This was a very large intervention operation. The intention there was to send a fairly strong signal to the market. At the end of the last century, Japan became the first major economy to cut interest rates to zero. During the COVID pandemic, many other nations adopted that tactic to support their economies. Those countries are now raising interest rates, but the Bank of Japan, BOJ, on Friday yet again kept its main rate below zero. And that is bad for its currency. The yen has long been seen as a safe haven, which investors traditionally bought at times of crisis. But that status is now on shaky ground. This year alone it has lost more than a fifth of its value against the US dollar to hit the lowest level since 1990. Why is the yen weak? The yen, the third most traded currency globally, fell as low as 135.2 yen after starting 2022 at 115. With the dollar up more than 16% so far this year, the yen is on track for its biggest annual drop since 2013. The weakness primarily stems from widening interest rate differentials between Japan and elsewhere. While the rest of the world, led by the US Federal Reserve, is raising rates aggressively to tame soaring inflation, the Bank of Japan has doubled down on its easy policy stance. The gap between Japanese 10-year government bond yields and those in the United States is 293 basis points a near three-year high, while the gap with German yields is at eight-year highs. Will authorities intervene? They certainly say they might. On Friday, Japan's government and central bank said they were concerned by the recent sharp falls, the strongest warning to date that Tokyo could intervene. The yen quickly bounced away from its two-decade lows, but not everyone is convinced actual intervention is likely. Given the economy's reliance on exports, Japan has historically focused on arresting sharp yen rises and taken a hands-off approach to yen weakness, which is more difficult because yen buying requires Japan to draw on limited foreign reserves. The last time Japan intervened to support its currency was 1998, when the Asian financial crisis triggered rapid capital outflows from the region. Before that, Tokyo intervened to counter yen falls in 1991 to 1992. Currency intervention is costly and could easily fail, given the difficulty of influencing the yen's value in global foreign exchange markets. What should we be paying attention to with weak yen? What do we got to focus on? We, we still have to focus on uh, what the central banks are going to do, especially what the BOJ is going to do over the next few weeks. They have a, a meeting coming up in a few weeks. And uh, we think that they're going to um, potentially raise that cap on 10-year JGB really? yields. Yes. You're willing to call that, that they're going to go from a 0.25 out to something new? There's going to be a, a, a loss or a, or a lack of tolerance for, for a weaker yen. As you said, imports are going to start getting more expensive in Japan. Right. Uh, it's true that they need more inflation, but it seems that they also right. don't need the kind of uncertainty that's brought to the market by a lot of dollar yen volatility. Okay, but two, and we're talking about a cultural change in Japan. Are we going to see that at this time? No, I wouldn't describe it as such. To, to say it's a cultural change would be to say that somehow. 0.25% is some sort of line in the sand that is immutable. Uh, it was in, always intended to adjust with conditions. Uh, inflation is returning to Japan to some extent, but more importantly, this, the BOJ risks having a situation where it's forced to absorb and buy every JGB on the planet. And the adjustment they have to make here is to raise the cap. It's not a cultural change. I think it's what central banks do all the time. Uh, move with the times, move with the data. Will Japan raise rates? Baj Governor Haruhiko Kuroda has repeatedly said the economy is too weak to handle higher interest rates. Like much of the rest of the world, Japanese consumers are struggling with rising inflation, but that has been welcomed by policymakers who have long wanted prices to rise. Mr. Kuroda says the bank's current policy is necessary to help it reach its 2% inflation target. That is because for years Japan has faced deflation or falling prices, which is bad for an economy, because when prices keep dropping, consumers tend to hold back on buying big ticket items as they expect them to be cheaper in the future. What can stop the decline? 
a marked improvement in growth prospects as the country reopens its borders post-COVID, and higher inflation could alter the Baja's dovish stance. Japan's core consumer prices in April were 2.1% higher than a year earlier, exceeding the Baja's 2% inflation target for the first time in seven years. The yen's fall could stop if the Baja changes tack and becomes hawkish. Any sign that rates outside of Japan are peaking might also prompt a relief rally. There are no signs of that yet though, with US rates set to peak at 3.5% in mid 2023. Does a weaker yen boost the economy? The yen has weakened back towards recent seven year lows versus the Chinese yuan, and is hitting new multi year lows against the Korean won and the Taiwanese dollar, which should provide some relief for Japan's widening trade deficit. Currency weakness is crucial for Japan's economy to maintain its competitiveness as a secure source of supply chain diversification. The yen's decline also boosts the attractiveness of its stock market among foreign investors, who consider it undervalued versus European and US markets. Japanese stocks have outperformed rivals in 2022, although they are still down as investors globally dump riskier assets. Uh, I don't think the yen has been as cheap as it is now in living memory. Uh, so uh, that will be a big boost. I mean, tourists were already clamoring for borders to reopen, very, very keen, uh, especially in Singapore and elsewhere to visit Japan once it opens again. So I think uh, the weekend would serve as another motivating factor for that. Japan may potentially face energy shortages uh, this winter or maybe even an energy shock. Um, that's not really uh, something that we are very concerned about. Um, after all, the Japanese government does have plans, I think, uh, in the back pocket to restart nuclear reactors if it were so required. Uh, in any case, I think um, they are not doing that poorly in terms of uh, uh, gas supplies at the moment. So it's not quite a European situation. Uh, in Japan right now when it comes to energy. The, the yen probably will get a little bit more weaker. So with the weekend, is it time to buy some of the, the big Japanese exporters? I'm thinking maybe Toyota, Mitsubishi, all of the, the car makers, are they a good buy at the moment? What does it mean for consumers and businesses? The weak yen makes everything Japan buys more expensive. The country relies heavily on imported oil and gas. Because of exchange rates and rising energy prices, the amount of money it spent on imports last month jumped by 46% but it is not all bad news for businesses. The money made abroad by Japanese exporters is worth a lot more back home. As exports account for about 15% of the country's total economic activity, that is not insignificant. However, Japan's consumers have seen their purchasing power halved over the last decade. 10 years ago, 10,000 yen would buy an item worth $132, but today it only gets you something worth $67. That is a major problem because average salaries in Japan have hardly risen in over three decades. The issue is even more acute when people need to use the yen to pay for things overseas, for example when they travel or their children study abroad. What does it mean for FX markets? The yen has long been the currency of choice for investors undertaking so-called carry trades, which involve borrowing in a low-yielding currency like the yen to invest in higher-yielding currencies like US or Canadian dollars. A strategy borrowing in yen and investing in an equal basket of US, Australian and Canadian dollars would have yielded more than 13% so far in 2022, according to Refinitive data. But the speed of the yen's drop and questions about policymaker intervention is fueling unease among investors, especially with short bets against the yen near six-month highs. Further volatility and weakness could undermine its appeal as a funding currency. What about domestic investors? The yen's weakness puts Japanese investors in a bind. Yields are high and rising, which makes foreign bonds much more attractive. But that also means the cost of FX hedging is climbing. So Japanese investors can often only capture the higher yields if they buy foreign bonds unhedged. But with the yen at such depressed levels, it is difficult for investors to stomach such currency risk, such as the yen appreciating. Even a modest move back to 115 to 120, where we were four months ago, would eat up years' worth of yield advantage.